2022. Um, a few of us here in the town hall in Enniskill, others are joining us via WebEx. But I welcome you all as councillors uh, to this, my final meeting uh, as uh, the chair of Fermanagh Noble City Council. There will be more said about that next month. And uh, can I welcome the chief executive and the senior management team, officers and staff of uh, staff of council members, and of the press corps and members of the general public. Just as before, the protocol for the meeting, I respect the chair and each other. And councillors wishing to speak will be taken as follows: first of all, via the council chamber, and secondly, via WebEx as has been my practice all year. Our meeting agenda, matters arising items are listed are for noting, so I'm not anticipating any long debates on any of these issues, councillors, and I'd like your cooperation in that. And correspondence are three items for noting and two items for consideration. Next we'll go on to, and it's a, a very sad uh, moment actually, for, for myself and my party colleagues, and that's the passing of former Democratic Unionist Party Councillor on Oma District Council for the West Tyrone DEA, and that is the Reverend Harry Cairns. So the, de the death took place recently of the Reverend Harry Cairns, who served as a councillor on the Oma District Council from 1985 until 1993. Reverend Cairns was for many years Minister of the Free Presbyterian Church in Oma, and he was a man of great faith. He was first elected to serve the people of West Tyrone as a DUP councillor in the local government elections of 1985, taking the seat previously held by his party colleague and fellow Minister of the Church, the Reverend Ivan Foster, where he was elected on the first count. He repeated in 1989. He stepped away from public representation, not seeking re election in 1993. The Reverend Cairns was back on the ballot paper as a candidate in Oma Town in 1997, where he was unsuccessful in his bid to return to the chamber. Councillor Clark and Councillor Rainey, MBE, would both have served in the chamber with the late Reverend Cairns during his second term. He is predeceased by his late wife Irene and survived by his daughter Rowena, sons Ian and Paul and their families, and his brother Cecil. To the family, I extend my sincere sympathies on behalf of the Chamber on the passing of a much loved father, grandfather, and brother. In accordance with the Council's expression of sympathy protocol, I would ask you to join me in standing for one minute silence as a marker for respect to the late former Councillor Reverend Harry Cairns. Thank you. Thank you, councillors. Secondly, I have uh, it's in a later moment, and as I send many congratulations to Mr. Graham Dodds on his appointment as Deputy Lieutenant for County Tyrone. As we all know, uh, Graham is a senior officer in the Police Service of Northern Ireland and also a senior officer in the RAF Cadets organization. So many congratulations to uh, Graham on his elevation to Deputy Lieutenant for Tyrone. I have already sent him a letter of congratulations, which has, he has acknowledged. 
And also the other issue that we're dealing with this evening is Melissa McPhillips, our Democratic Services uh, Manager. This is her final full council meeting. And I would like to take this opportunity, although you've been with us a short time, Melissa, to wish you all the very best for your future. Thank you. Okay, we're going now to people wanting to speak, and I will bring in uh, Councillor Dr. Josephine Dehan, BioWebEx. Thank you, Chair. Um, could I join with you, Chair, in expressing my sincere condolences to the Kearns family on the sad passing uh, of Reverend Harry Kearns? Chair, I didn't have the pleasure of serving on council uh, with Reverend uh, uh, Kearns, but I know him in a person. I knew him in a personal capacity, and um, it was a great privilege uh, for me uh, to to know him. Uh, he was uh, a gentleman of exemplary uh, character. Uh, he was dedicated uh, to his uh, work for the community in his role as a minister. And uh, I know him uh, to be a man who was com completely committed uh, to the well-being of his uh, community. Um, I was greatly saddened by news of his passing. And I do want to express my sincere condolences uh, to his family, to Rowena, Ian, Paul, um, uh, grandchildren and his brother and the wider family circle. Uh, it certainly uh, is a very sad uh, occasion for them and we think of them at this sad time. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dr. Dehan, for your remarks. Thank you. Okay, uh, there's no one else indicating. It's fine. We'll carry on with the, the normal business of the Council. And first of all, we'll go to uh, apologies. Item number one, uh, apologies. I will go to the group leaders. Um, sorry, Councillor Alan Rainey, MBE, do you wish to come in on that other matter? Sorry, WebEx. Councillor Rainey. Okay, we're trying to get you in here, Councillor Rennie. Okay, I'll come back to you, Councillor Rennie. Uh, next, uh, we'll go to apologies, and I'll go to uh, maybe the Sinn Féin group leader, if he's on, and that's Councillor Tommy Maguire. Uh, no, uh, I'll go to the Chief Executive. Okay, Chair, just to note, uh, apologies on behalf of the Sinn Féin grouping. So that's for Councillors Campbell, Clark, Curry, Anne Marie Donnelly, Feely, Fitzgerald, Green, Catherine Kelly, Podrigine Kelly, Maguire, McCaffrey, McCann, McElduff, O'Reilly, and Withers. Okay, thank you, Chief Executive. All 15 uh, Sinn Féin councillors have apologies from their, from their group. It's fine. Uh, we'll go next to. Uh, the also unionist group leader, and we have him in the chamber, is Councillor Robert Irvine. <clears throat> Councillor Irvine. Um, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, unlike the, the other party group, you have just mentioned um, there are no apologies from us, so obviously we've got all our business done and can come to the meeting tonight. Thanks. Thank you. Next up, we go to Councillor Paul Robinson, the Democratic Unionist Party group leader. Thank you, Chair. No apologies, but Councillor Stevenson will be a bit late. Thank you. We'll now go now to uh, the group leader of the SDLP, Councillor Mary Gardy. Thank you, Chair. Um, one apology, Councillor Adam Gannon. And Chair, could I just take this opportunity to offer my condolences and the condolences of our party, the SDLP, in the passing of your friend and colleague, uh, Reverend Cairns, 
Um, I wasn't, uh, didn't know him personally, but I do offer my sympathies to him at this sad time. And I also want to take this opportunity to wish Melissa all the best in her endeavours. Thank you, Chair. And yourself in your last meeting tonight, as you said, we'll talk more about it next month, but you have done a sterling job indeed, but we'll talk about that next month. Thanks, Chair. Okay. Thanks very much, uh, Councillor Gardy, for your remarks. Much appreciated. And now we'll go to Alliance, uh, the smaller parties, if any. No indications from any other party. We'll now go to we'll, we'll, we'll now go back to Councillor Alan Rainey, MBE, for his remarks. Councillor Rainey. <coughs> well, thank you, Chair. And it certainly would be remiss of me not to uh, pass my condolences to the Cairns family on the, the passing of Councillor the Reverend Harry Cairns. Harry Cairns was a, a wise counsellor. He gave sound judgment. He was totally committed as a counsellor to the, uh, the, the constituency of, of or to Oma Town, DEA, and to West Tyrone. And uh, I had the pleasure of serving with him for a, a good number of years. And uh, during that time, uh, we had a strong uh, relationship. And uh, I would want to be on the record of uh, sending my condolences to his wife, to his family, and to the wider family circle at this time. And thank you, Chair, for affording me that opportunity. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Rooney, for your for your your very solemn remarks and I um, apologise we couldn't get you in earlier there but there were technical issues I think there. Uh, next up via Webex is Councillor Mark Buchanan. Mr Buchanan. Chair, Chair, thank you. Um, I should have been in with you earlier. Just on behalf of our party group and as well I would like to express our condolences to the Cairns family. Um, while, while I knew uh, the Reverend Cairns, um, maybe not as personally as some, um, he had a, a good um, representation of West Tyrone, and he was a well-known uh, man in the area, and he will be a loss to his local community. So we'd just like to put on record on behalf of our party and the group uh, our condolences to all the family connected at this time. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Councillor Buchanan. Thank you. Just lower your hand there now for the grid. Okay, we'll go on now to item two. Sorry. Okay, we're going to item two on the agenda and ask to confirm and sign the minutes of the council meeting held on the 5th of April 2022 and it's paper A. First of all, for accuracy, page one, page two, page three, page four, page five, page six, Page seven, page eight, page nine, page ten, page eleven, page twelve, page thirteen, page fourteen, page fifteen, and page sixteen. Can we have our proposer and seconder for the adoption of the minutes? And we'll go to the chamber and we have Councillor Paul Robinson. Proposed. Proposed by Councillor Paul Robinson, seconded by Councillor Paul Blake. Thank you. All agreed. Thanks again for that. Okay, on to item three, and we have declarations of interest, if any. Okay, councillors, I'm not seeing any indications whether in the chamber or on WebEx. Thank you. On to item four, and it's matters are raising. And we'll just take it page by page. So, page one, page two, page three, page four, page five. Chief Executive. 
Thank you, Chair. Just to draw members' attention to the response received from the Port Down Armagh uh, Railway Society in relation to the Council's letter of support. So they're just acknowledging that, Chair, and also committing to ongoing engagement with the Council on this matter. So just for noting. Okay. Uh, we have all the correspondence there. I say the 4 1. Uh, item 4, uh, item 4 1, uh, item 9.5. Uh, our chief executive just covered. Can we have a proposal and seconder to note? <clears throat> Councillor John Coyle and Councillor Garvin McPhillips, BioEbix. Thank you. You're all agreed? Okay, noted. Page, that was page five, page six, page seven. Executive. Thank you, Chair. Uh, item 97, we have two letters. Uh, this related to the issue of geo-blocking, and we've been asked to make further representations to RTE. Um, so the first letter is from the Director General of RTE with an apology for the, the delay in the response and setting out that as far as is practicable uh, and within RTE scope of influence, they do endeavour to make as much of their programming available as possible and don't advocate geo-blocking. And the second letter is from TG Cahar, who indicates that uh, geo-blocking is not something um, that it uh, pursues within the island of Ireland. So both for information, Chair. Okay, councillors, you've heard the chief executive and you know the correspondence here is in item 9.5 9 item 9 and it's uh, two, two issues there for noting. A proposer, Councillor Heard Thornton, we have a seconder, Councillor Diane Armstrong. Are we all agreed? Not seeing any dissent, thank you. Uh, Brian on our minutes, and we have uh, page seven, page eight. Chief Executive. Yes, thank you, Chair. Just uh, midway down uh, page 8, item 10.1, we have three letters in relation to the Council's motion on the cost of living crisis. Uh, the first from the Department for Infrastructure, which has set out the Minister's actions in relation to uh, how some of the pressures can be alleviated. Secondly, also dated the 7th of April from the Minister of Health, um, referencing the, the uh, specific links between the cost of living crisis and health deprivation. And finally, Chair, from the uh, Minister of Education's office, uh, with the open expectation with the uh, re-establishment of the executive, that there will be a specific focus uh, on cost of living and the pressures facing the education sector. Thank you very much again, Chief Executive. Okay, you've heard the, the correspondence read and uh, Robert there, and there's three items for noting. Uh, can we have a proposal and seconder to the note, please? Councillor in the Chamber, Councillor Irvine, seconded by Councillor Paul Robinson. So that's Councillor Robert Irvine proposed, seconded by Councillor Paul Robinson. We all agreed. Okay, councillors have not seen any dissent on that issue either. Thank you. Okay, that's page eight, page nine, page ten. Page 11. Page 11, Chief Executive. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just to draw members' attention to two items of correspondence received in relation to the motion on the independent review of all debts with potential issues around domestic violence. Um, the first response, Chair, is from the Southern Health and Social Care Trust, really has dealt with it more or less like a, an assembly question and just sets out the safeguarding pathways and also the whistleblowing arrangements. And the second piece of correspondence dated the 26th of April is from the Northern Health and Social Care Trust, also setting out its arrangements for such matters. Thank you, Chief Executive. And I see via WebEx uh, with Councillor Dr. Josephine Dehan. Councillor Dehan. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I want to propose uh, to note uh, these two items of correspondence, Chair, and uh, to welcome the assurances that we have received uh, from the Southern Health and Social Care Trust and the Northern 
Health and Social Care Trust regarding uh, their policies uh, on safeguarding and, and whistleblowing. And uh, I think that this will uh, serve to reiterate uh, the zero tolerance that we as a society have for uh, domestic abuse and also our concern uh, regarding uh, the number of victims uh, that we see in our communities and sadly deaths as well. So I, I welcome that correspondence, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Dr. Dehan, for, for proposing the noting. I'll be a seconder for noting. Councillor Keith Elliott in the Chamber, second the noting of the correspondence. Thank you very much. Uh, I see no dissent anywhere else, so thank you again. Moving on, we're still on page 11, page 12, page 13, 13, Chief Executive. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just two items of correspondence in relation to the motion adopted by the Council regarding recruiting staff within the hospitality and tourism sectors. Maybe just to note, Chair, in the first instance, um, we and we regularise this in the correspondence. The motion made reference to Mr. Stephen Foster. It, it was, in fact, Mr. Kevin Foster. So that just notes the, um, in case you see a discrepancy between the letters and, and the motion, we, we regularised it in the correspondence. So we have received two letters here, Chair. The first is from, uh, I suppose, the policy lead in relation uh, from the Home Office who have set out their provisions really around the skills approach and the accreditation arrangements. And the second letter is from the Minister of Finance. You'll recall that we were uh, to communicate with all relevant um, executive ministers and the minister advises that he has no role in the staff recruitment issues and notes that we have made representations to the Department for the Economy. Okay, thank you, Chief Executive. Um, we have uh, two councillors indicating bioethics. First up, we have Councillor Diane Armstrong. Ms. Armstrong. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Chief Executive. Firstly, apologies for the um, for the um, erroneous uh, name. Um, I think my source gave, <laughs> supplied the wrong name, so apologies, and thank you for correcting that. Um, with reference to the letter, the first letter, um, yes, I, I do uh, um, note that it states immigration must be considered alongside investment in and the development of uh, the UK's domestic labour uh, force rather than an alternative to it. But certainly the thrust of the motion was the emergency and the crisis that is now that, um, and I do applaud the efforts being made at our local uh, Southwest College. In this, uh, and the second point, uh, the second uh, point being that I have been um, in correspondence with the Chief Executive of Tourism NI, to encourage Hats and Hospital, Hospitality Ulster to, to further their work um, promoting the employer's charter in the Fermanagh and Oma district. And I'm waiting to be, um, to be um, briefed on further work that will be done in that regard. So just want to, with that, uh, Chair, I would like to propose to note the two letters. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Armstrong. And next up, we have uh, Councillor Howard Thornton. Councillor Thornton. Uh, Chair, yes, I've got in there. Uh, yes, I, I'll second the noting. Uh, Councillor Armstrong has highlighted uh, what she has been working at, and uh, but I'll second the noting of the correspondence. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Thornton. Councillor Matthew Bale wishes to speak in the matter. Councillor Bale. Uh, thank you, Chair. No, I just wanted to add my comments to, to I suppose, the second piece of correspondence. Um, it's. It, it's been noted, but um, there's not much actual substance to note. Um, it, it's clear that um, that Conor Murphy's passing the buck onto the, to, onto the onto the economy minister. But then it's even more disappointing that the economy minister um, didn't even reply. So just just wanted to voice my disappointment around that chair. Thank you. Okay, comments are noted, Councillor Bell. Thank you. Okay, moving on with our, our minutes. Um, we're still page 13, page 14, page 15, and page 16. Okay, nothing further there. Thank you.
Okay, now we're on to uh, item five, and that's to confirm the minutes of the reconvened planning committee meeting held on the 20th of March, 2022, and it's paper B. So it's page one, page two, page three, page four, page five, Page six, page seven, page eight, page nine, page ten, page eleven, page twelve, page thirteen, page fourteen, page fifteen, page sixteen, page seventeen. Page 18 and page 19. I'm conscious that the, the chair of the committee is not present. Councillor Campbell is not present. So two other members of the committee, and I see them in front of me, and they're in the chamber. And as Councillor Robert Irvine's proposed the adoption, seconded by Councillor Paul Robinson. And I think uh, Councillor Nathan and Councillor Rainey are maybe supporting that. Thank you very much. And there's no disagreement or dissent. Okay, so that's agreed. Thank you. On to item six, and it's to confirm the minutes of the Environmental Services Committee meeting held on the 6th of June 2022, and it's paper C for accuracy. Page one, page two, page three, page four, page five, Page six, page seven, page eight, page nine, page ten, page eleven, page twelve, page thirteen, page fourteen, and page fifteen. Okay, I go to the chair of the company and via WebEx and as Councillor Mark Buchanan, who's adoption. Happy to propose, Chair. Okay, and seconded via WebEx by Councillor Dr. Josephine Dehan. And I'm not seeing any dissent, so that's agreed. Thank you. On to item seven, and it's to confirm the minutes of the regeneration, sorry, confirm the minutes of the Brexit Committee meeting held on the 7th of April, 2022, and it's paper D. Page one for accuracy, page two, page three, and page four. So the chair of the committee is not present. So any member of the committee wish to propose and second the adoption. Okay, Councillor Robert Irvine in the chamber is proposed. Seconded by Councillor Heard Thornton, supported by Councillor Diane Armstrong, and all agreed. Thank you. On to item eight, and asked to confirm the minutes of the Regeneration and Community Committee held on the 12th of April 2022, and it's paper E for accuracy, and it's page one, page two. Page three, page four, page five, page six, page seven, page eight, page nine, page ten, page eleven, page twelve, page thirteen, page fourteen. Page 15, page 16, page 17, page 18, and page 19. Okay, uh, conscious that uh, Councillor Warrington was not present on the evening, so I'm going to be the acting chair of the committee on that evening was Councillor John McClory for the adoption of the minutes. Councillor McClory. 
Thank you, Chair. I'd like to propose those minutes. For Thank you very much, Councillor McClory. And seconded by Councillor Dr. Josephine Dehan by WebEx. And there's no dissent I'm seeing, so all agreed. Thank you. Okay, on to item nine, and that's to confirm the minutes of the Policy and Resources Committee meeting held on the 13th of April 2022, and it's paper F. For accuracy, page one, page two, page three, page four, page five, page six, page seven, page eight, page nine, and page 10. I now go to Councillor Howard Thornton, the Chair of the Committee, to propose the adoption of the minutes. Councillor Thornton. Chair, I propose uh, the minutes for a location, please. Thank you very much, Councillor Thornton. And uh, that's seconded by Councillor Diane Armstrong by Webex. And I don't see any dissent, so those minutes are passed. Thank you. We now go on to uh, item 10, and it's uh, to consider the report on call-in of decision taken at the Environmental Services Committee meeting held on the 6th of April 2022 regarding request for the creation of a Garden of Remembrance, or gar sorry, a Garden of Reflection, and that is paper G. So I'm going to hand over to the Chief Executive to cover this item. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. The, Chair, the details are set out within the papers before members, but in summary, we have received a valid call-in uh, for a decision taken at the Environmental Services Committee meeting last month regarding uh, the creation of a Garden of Reflection. As uh, the report sets out, we now need to proceed to convene a meeting of the Ad Hoc Committee, and the Ad Hoc Committee will then decide the next steps in relation to this matter. Um, so we would just request that members note this and we will be proceeding with the convening of the meeting within the next week to 10 days, Chair. Thank you very much, Chief Executive, for the clarification on, on that matter. Okay, and we're going now uh, by WebEx uh, for noting and to agree the actions. And that's uh, first up is Councillor Dr. Josephine Dehan. Thank you, Chair. And uh, thanks to Alison for her report. Uh, I would like to propose a recommendation, Chair, uh, as presented in the report. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Dr. Dehan. Um, seconded, uh, Councillor Dale Armstrong, do you wish to come in and speak? Yes, Chair, thank you. Um, and thank you to Dr. Dehan for proposing. To note, I'm happy to propose to second. Okay, thank you, second. Secondly, not uh, thank you. And the ticket for all agreed, all agreed in the chamber, and all agreed by a WebEx to dissent. Thank you. And thanks, sir, uh, to our chief executive as well. Okay, on to item 11, and it's to see, receive a verbal update from Health and Social Care Services Subcommittee meeting held on the 27th of April 2022. And what we need for this is a proposal and secondary for the actions, as will be covered by our chief executive. Hey, thank you, Chair. Chair, the meeting was scheduled for last week and because of the period of pre-election sensitivity, there were no trust representatives in attendance. By our terms of reference, we require two trust members to be there so the meeting uh, couldn't form a quorum and therefore no business could be conducted. So there were a number of actions which were considered informally by the subcommittee and it's really, as you've said, Chair, to seek approval for these now to be actioned following the council meeting. The first is to write to the Chief Executive of the Western Health and Social Care Trust to seek a formal assurance from the Chief Executive for ongoing meaningful engagement between him and the senior management team with the Council and to express the Council's concern in relation to what would appear to be a, dim, a diminution in recent times of engagement with the Council. Secondly, to seek a formal update in relation to Drumclay Nursing Home as well as the associated staff with that facility and to see whether that would be a solution for the bed blocking which appears to be of significant concern at the Southwest Acute Hospital. That we would also write Chair um, seeking an urgent update in relation to the provision of acute surgical services at Southwest Acute Hospital and that we would write to the Minister of Health regarding the timescale for the acute mental health unit at OMA 
uh, provision has been made and obviously this commitment has been made previously, but it's really now the time scale for delivery. And the final comment here, which was a, a general concern, was given the delays which are now being encountered by elected members in some of their engagements with the trust, it's really to seek clarification in relation to the turnaround time for elected members' queries. So those were the actions proposed and just would be seeking a member's endorsement for those, Chair. Thank you very much uh, for covering that, uh, Chief Executive. And I'm just going via WebEx now to First Councillor indicating as Councillor Victor Warrington. Thank you, Chair. Well, certainly I was at that meeting and all those points were made very strongly and there were strong voices of support for them today. So I will propose that uh, those actions are now forwarded on. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Warrington. And second up in via WebEx is Councillor Bernice Swift. Councillor Swift. Uh, Kahir, look, and I too fully endorse all the points that Alison has clearly outlined and we most definitely want to see a swift response and hear uh, the rationale and raison d'etre for what seems to be the diminution of attendance as of recent and I don't think I need to preach to anybody that's uh, logged on here this evening health and social care services are top of everyone's agenda in seeking election to uh, the Stormont Assembly and it, it remains a very very important issue on every single category and we at the coalface want to be fully supportive of all our services both in Fermanagh and Tyrone of uh, SWA and all of the acute services and we still have many of the issues very much outstanding, but remain very relevant to all those who are adversely affected uh, by all of the same. So uh, the meeting with Neil McGuckian is paramount and tantamount how, do we, how we progress together effectively, because thus far it's been rather abysmal. Gormagat. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Swift. So you've been proposed and seconded, Councillor, proposed by Councillor Warrington, seconded by Councillor Swift for the actions as listed by uh, our Chief Executive. All agreed? Thank you. Okay, on to item 12. And again, uh, as I said at the outset of the meeting, uh, said at the outset of the meeting, uh, the first three items here, of course, buttons are for noting. So, uh, We'll move on to item 12.1. Uh, Chair, this is from the Treasury and this is regarding the Council's uh, previously adopted motion regarding the removal of entitlement to use red diesel. And as you'll see from the letter, while some measures have been put in place, there's not an intent to uh, remove uh, the, or to, I suppose, change the government policy in relation to the matters about which the Council had expressed concern. Hey, thank you, Chief Executive. Uh, we have Councillor Wilson via WebEx wishes to speak in the matter. Councillor Wilson. I can see you waving, Councillor Wilson. Uh, I want to get you speaking here now. We're having difficulty getting you to speak, Councillor Walson. Uh, I think IT is working on the matter here, so we'll, we'll just give it a minute here to see what happens. Yes, can you hear me now? So, yeah, loud and clear uh, now. Sorry, sorry about that. Uh, regarding uh, the red diesel, yes, uh, it is for noting, and I would propose that it does be noted. But as well as that, I'd like to point out the fact that I spoke to uh, a second uh, generation uh, cont uh, quarry, uh, George Crawford and Sons. Uh, he, said that he didn't mind me giving his name, uh, 43 Skelger Road, Clocker or Esker Hull, Fintner, whatever. Uh, 
it's costing two pound a ton for him to produce uh, extra for him to produce the uh, gravel or sand or whatever. And he said it's not very long from there was two pound a ton added of uh, aggregate tax. Uh, so that's really a, a double whammy. And uh, uh, the, the, there's one machine in the quarry uh, that's using uh, 420 pounds worth of extra, not diesel, and total, that's extra cost from changing from red to clear. And uh, as well as that, Quins have been hammered with a 15 pound a ton uh, uh, extra on the concrete. And when they bring them on a load of concrete, that's uh, really, uh, uh, that's about uh, uh, 450 pound extra for a load. And uh, the, the diesel cost there alone is £8,000 a month. He has very little uh, option other than to reduce the, the, the work staff. And uh, uh, something he doesn't want to do. But he said today he had about three uh, phone calls for uh, uh, to material. Uh, the, uh, the, the effect on the general cost of aggregate and the building others is, is uh, really a young couple now putting up a house, the extra cost that that's going to uh, be either to buy it or build it is going to be really uh, enormous. In fact, it could put it out of uh, their reach at all. Uh, the stones for the new A5 of it over about, they said, would cost uh, £25 million pounds per mile extra. So this is what we're dealing with. And that, like, that's not something just to be swept under the carpet, as they seem to be doing. Uh, everybody there, and I'm sure every councillor in there knows as well that uh, what the figures I am quoting there, as I say, the man gave his name. He says, I have no problem. Uh, I'll answer if anybody wants to know. But th that's what we're looking at. So as I, yes, I'll propose that we note it, but I think we need to try and do something more than for our constituents' benefit, that we need to be making a bit of a noise about it and, and trying to do is get some uh, alterations made to it, because it's not, it doesn't add up. Thank you, Chair. Well, thank, thank you, Councillor Wilson, for proposing to note. Uh, your comments have been well noted, and uh, you know I don't think anybody will disagree with your comments. Maybe I may bring the chief executive in. Maybe if there's any further action could be taken, I'll let her clarify it. Thank you. Well, chair, maybe just to note, uh, the council did embark on a series of letters and making representations on the back of the the motion, which was adopted. Uh, so we had written to the, the government and to the Treasury to cease the plans to remove the entitlement to use red diesel from most sectors, and we had highlighted the specific um, impact it would have on this district. So we have made representations, but I suppose this letter is at least the Treasury's response to say that they're not minded to make any changes. We haven't received any further correspondence at this stage. Could we get our new MLA to make, do something? I suppose that this is a this is a a matter. It's a Westminster yeah. matter. It's not something. Sorry, Councillor Walton. Uh, Chief Executive, clarifying the situation that this is a, a Westminster matter. Yeah. So it'll have to go higher even than the right. MLAs. So th thanks for. So the, need to go somewhere anyway. Thank you for your comments, <laughs> Councillor Walton. They're well noted, and I don't think anyone here is going to disagree with them. The Chief Executive has clarified the position that we're in. Uh, next up, we have Councillor John Coyle via WebEx. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'll second the noting, but very disappointed that uh, they have not changed their mind. They have stated that, um, you know, it's a significant change for businesses and that they were, you know, looking at alternative sources of, you know, to using vehicles. But that's a bit late, you know. Cutting off, cutting off a rebate on an industry like uh, business contracting, and uh, on another th uh, another note is about uh, tractor runs, charity tractor runs that local charities relied on finances. Uh, they are not allowed to use it anymore, but they don't want to do anything for to help them in this situation. We're going to have a dire situation in 
when farmers can't go on a tractor run to support local charities. I believe the the Chancellor will have to look at this again. Um, red diesel is one pound ten at this minute in time, uh, when it was at you know sixty five to seventy pence per liter. Uh, it has got a huge drop, uh, run or jump in prices, and again, uh, the rural farming community uh, has been hit with the increases, uh, and then. When it comes to, like Councillor Wilson was saying about uh, stone and aggregate uh, for draining or whatever, the consumer is going to pay extra money for to get it. So it's going to be more expensive for to build houses. It's going to be more expensive to lay lanes and drain and everything else. And that's unacceptable. We're in a cost of living crisis, but every cost is going up and we're getting no help. And I think it's just disgraceful that they're washing their hands of it. Uh, but something definitely needs to be done. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Coyle, for your remarks. And uh, we'll going now to the Chamber and bring Councillor Paul Robinson in. Thank you, Chair. Well, my colleague, uh, Carla Lockhart, is Upper Bonny MP. She has raised this several times in Westminster, and she is fighting for uh, on this matter in Westminster. So. Don't hear to call of any of the other parties doing anything in Westminster for it. So just let, let you know that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your clarification on that matter, Councillor Robinson. Okay, it's been proposed and noted. You've heard the remarks of the three councillors. Thank you for that. Okay, on to item 12.2 and as to note. The correspondence dated the 16th of April 2022 from Ross Lay Credit Union Limited regarding community wealth building. Chief Executive. Thanks, Chair. Members will recall that we wrote to uh, the credit unions across the district regarding the potential uh, contribution that they might make to community wealth building. So this is really Ross Lay Credit Union's response to that. And they've indicated their willingness to provide assistance and to engage with our officers uh, as a, a plan is developed. So. We haven't received very many other responses on this chair. We are still progressing the idea of community wealth, wealth building, so we will be reporting back in due course and we will make sure our officer team engage with uh, Ross Day Credit Union on the subject. Thank you very much, uh, Chief Executive, for the clarification on that issue. And uh, can we have a proposal and seconded on a note? Going to the Chamber, we have Councillor Robert Irvine proposing, seconded by Councillor Paul Robinson and supported by Councillor Mary Gardy. Thank you. Okay, on to item 12.3, and is to note correspondence dated the 22nd of April 2022 from the Minister of Health in the Republic uh, regarding uh, GP services in the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. Go to the Chief Executive. Uh, yes, Chair. Th this really followed on from the Council's correspondence that efforts would be made given the general recruitment crisis in GPs across the district and in rural areas more generally to look at the potential harmonisation of the uh, criteria north and south of the border. And this response is to say from uh, Minister Donnelly's perspective that he can only operate within the Irish Medical Council's guidelines and has no, ro no role in amending the legislation in Northern Ireland. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Chief Executive. We will now go to uh, Councillor Dr. Josephine Dehan via WebEx. <coughs> Councillor Dehan. Thank you, Chair, and uh, thank you, Alison, for your report. Uh, Chair, well, first of all, I want to propose to note this correspondence from Fiona Conroy, Private Secretary to Mr. Stephen Donnelly, uh, Minister for Health in the Republic of Ireland. Um, the information provided in this letter, Chair, is factually correct. I think uh, that this correspondence arose in the context of the debate which we had in the Chamber uh, regarding the crisis which currently exists in uh, um, recruiting and retaining GPs to work in our District Council area. And uh, we felt that, it would, that, that there would be a pool of trained GPs within the Republic of Ireland 
uh, possibly resident in border areas that would be interested in accepting full time posts uh, in our district council area. The fact of the matter is that at present, um, even though uh, those GPs are fully trained, uh, they do have to complete a period of um, uh, training uh, within Northern Ireland to familiarise themselves with the uh, organisational aspects and the modus operandi of the health and social care system in Northern Ireland. And I, I, I think that that really does put newly qualified GPs off because uh, they, they are unable or unwilling uh, to undergo uh, uh, further training before they can take up practice. So what I would propose, Chair, is that we would um, liaise or write again to NIMDATA um, and ask them to uh, uh, liaise with their counterparts in the Republic of Ireland to see what can be done to harmonise this arrangement so that uh, newly qualified GPs from the Republic of Ireland are not impeded if they want to come and practice north of the border. So I make that proposal, Chair, thank you, and also propose to note the correspondence. Thank you, Councillor Dr Dehan. Uh, okay, you've heard it proposed to note and also you've heard the proposal on the, on the back of that to write again uh, as to do with harmonising the arrangements between uh, two jurisdictions of Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. Uh, Councillor Heard Thornton via WebEx. Councillor Thornton. Uh, yes, Chair, I'm quite happy to second the noting and also second the proposal from Councillor Deacon. I think it's uh, useful to do what she has proposed. Thank you. No problem. Th thanks very much, Councillor. Thornton, and not seeing anyone else indicating here. So, okay, it's been proposed and seconded to note, and it's been proposed and seconded again by Councillor Dr. Dehan, and seconded by Councillor Herr Thornton, that uh, further correspondence takes place with regard to harmonising arrangements between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland on this issue. All agreed? Thank you. Okay, on to item 12.4 as to consider correspondence dated the 25th of April 2022 from Ards North Down Borough Council regarding the lighting up of buildings. I'm going to bring the Chief Executive in on this one. Thank you. Yes, Chair, thank you. Chair, members will recall that we have illuminated our civic buildings in solidarity with the people of Ukraine. And our policy is at the moment that we only do one such illumination. So as such, we'd be recommending that we would we would note this letter and respond accordingly to Ards and North Down. We are uh, undertaking just an initial review of the policy chair because we are aware of some inconsistencies and we, we will be reporting back to uh, the Regeneration and Community Committee in due course regarding that. Okay, thank you, uh, Chief Executive. I'm going now to Chamber. Councillor Irving, do you wish to come in? A bit of discussion with some of the party colleagues, and we would agree we have a policy. Unless we actually alter the policy, we can't uh, fulfil the requirements that Ards and North Down are doing. Uh, I welcome the fact that uh, the chief executive says we will review the policy. I mean, it's it's really just a review to see how it's working and everything like so. Um, I'm happy with that. So, a proposed note. Okay. Uh, thank you much for the serving. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. And second in the noting in the chamber is Councillor Keith Elliott. Okay, thank you for that. I will now go to uh, WebEx. I'm with Councillor Matthew Bell. Councillor Bell. Uh, thank you, Chair. I know I was coming in just to second that, but um, well, I also just want to thank Alison for the clarification for she answered the question before I even got a chance to ask it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay. It's been proposed and seconded for noting and supported for noting. And that uh, following the remarks of our chief executive, that the, the policy will be looked at in due course. Thank you very much for that. Okay, uh, last item of correspondence is 12.5, and it's to consider the details of Tourism Conference 2022, an innovative and sustainable future 
to be held on the 13th of May 2022 in the ICC Belfast. Chief Executive. Yes, Chair. Uh, maybe just to say at the outset, I recognise this date has a number of clashes already. We have the NILGA Executive in OMA that morning and uh, our working group with Donegal County Council in the afternoon. But this uh, tourism conference, it's a free of charge event. So attendance, as you'll have seen, it's an in-person event in Belfast. So the only cost would be travel costs. And uh, we would take nominations this evening, Chair, to allow for the registrations to be made. Thank you, Chief Executive. Mr. Robert Irvine in the Chamber. Yeah, I, I would like to nominate Councillor Thornton, who has a, a very good interest in tourism, and I think he would be happy to go up. Thank you. Okay. Any other nominees? No other nominees via WebEx or on the Chamber. Are you happy to propose the noting of that as well, Councillor Irvine? And we have a seconder for noting. Councillor Keith Elliott in the Chamber, noting. Second in the noting, uh, we have nom one nomination, and that's Councillor Heard Thornton. And I take it we're all agreed with that. Okay. Any other nominations to follow can be done via the usual channels. Thanks very much. There's uh, 12.6 other. No other correspondence. Uh, item 13, any urgent and relevant business? I haven't been. Uh, Contacted by anyone with any regard to any urgent and relevant business. Uh, I take it you haven't either, Chief Executive. Okay. Okay. Can we have a proposer and seconder to go into part two confidential business? Proposed by Councillor Irvine and seconded by Councillor Robinson.
Councillor Paul Blake in the chamber. And we're all agreed. We're back in, into OK. Thanks, folks. We're back into normal business again. And I will now uh, call upon our chief executive uh, to give a resume of what took place whilst in committee. Thank you, Chair. While in committee, the Council confirmed and signed the confidential minutes of the Council meeting held on the 5th of April. There were no matters arising from those minutes. And the confidential minutes of the reconvened Planning Committee meeting held on the 28th of March, the Environmental Services Committee meeting held on the 6th of April, and the Policy and Resources Committee meeting held on the 13th of April were also confirmed. Thank you very much, uh, Chief Executive. But uh, can we have a proposal seconder? That took place, Councillor Irvine, seconded by Councillor Robinson, and all agreed. Okay. Can I just say again? Councillor Dr. Dehan, do you wish to come in? Yes, uh, thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, I want to congratulate you on how you have handled that meeting, and I think we're through business uh, in record time. And I know that uh, we will be able to pay tribute to your work at our AGM. But I think everyone will agree that you really have uh, discharged your responsibilities as chair of this council admirably with great dedication and professionalism. And I want to thank you most sincerely for that. It is a huge commitment and, and we recognise that and applaud you uh, for the work you've done. And also, Chair, I was remiss in not extending my good wishes to Melissa McPhillips and wish her well uh, in the years ahead. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Dr. Leighan, for your remarks. Much appreciated. And over now to Councillor Bert Wilson. Councillor Wilson. Uh, yeah, yes, Chair. Well, uh, uh, I don't uh, intend making a speech the next night or anything, but I do uh, agree with uh, Councillor Joe, uh, Dr. Do Joe Dehan that, yes, you have had a, a, a magnificent run for the year and handled it very well. And uh, I, I'm just wondering how long this strike is going to last. Uh, but uh, it's uh, it's not often we get uh, a meeting over at this time. But anyway, uh, really uh, a, a well done job, uh, Chairman, and uh, we wish you very well. And I'm sure you'll not be sorry to get uh, sitting standing down for a, a term. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Councillor Wilson, for your kind remarks. And uh, over you now, Councillor Alex Baird via WebEx. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I um, agree with previous comments, and I will finish with, um, on a musical note, if you don't mind, one, I think, a song of the Rolling Stones, the last time, this could be the last time. So <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed it. And <laughs> a, a Van Morrison quote, wouldn't it be great if it was like this all the time? Maybe we, yeah. <laughs> we can go forward. Best I, wishes. I, I... I couldn't possibly comment on that one, Councillor Baird. <laughs> well, that Thanks. happy note. Well, that happy note. Uh, thank you for your comments, and we'll bring the meeting to a close. Thanks, everybody, for your contribution and your cooperation this evening. Look forward to seeing you at the annual meeting in June. Thank you.